wars. Famine. Natural disasters. All of these are signs of the times according to God's word. Join us every other Monday as we look at where we are. According to biblical prophecy, we eagerly await that blessed hope, that is, the return of our Lord Jesus. Welcome to Breaking News, presented by Bearing Witness Podcast. Yes, my name is Phil. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us again on the Breaking News Podcast. We're so blessed each and every time we do it, and we thank you for inviting us into your homes. What's up, everyone? I'm Ronnie. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are listening to us, watching us. Look, we are so incredibly thankful that you have decided to join us today to grow and to learn God's Word together. Amen. Hello, everybody. See, I'm going to do it every time now. <laughs> I like it. That was for friends of ours at home. <laughs> I don't have my cup. <laughs> Glasses. I do. Uh, we, uh, we thank you each and every one of you for joining us and we we can't express how much we love each and every one of you and thank you for the support and the prayers um what god is doing through this already just in our lives personally and how we're growing in the lord and learning more and more growing closer to one another growing closer to god it's Mm -hmm. it's been amazing it's a blessing it's a huge blessing absolutely and it it's invigorated me in a way that i haven't been in a very long time Amen. That going through the motions thing is real. We all know that people. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. But man, if you ever find a group of people who really truly want to be kingdom minded and serve the Lord and start growing together, something Amen. miraculous starts happening. Amen. Stick with that. Amen. Acts chapter two. That's what starts happening. Amen. Good point. Mm-hmm. I like that. Well, bearing witness on Fridays. Acts chapter two. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Had to. (laughs) Well, once again, you know, uh, what's up, everyone? We are so, so incredibly thankful that you're uh, watching, listening, uh, growing with us, uh, because we are, too. Yes. Um, Look, um, this is Breaking News brought to you by Bearing Witness Podcast. Um, As I say every time, uh, we are going to, uh, what do I say? Oh, we dig. (laughs) Dig. We unpack. Yes. There you go. Hold on. Sorry, I got to wake up a little bit. Okay. We are going to, don't edit that out. We are going to unpack the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And we're actually going to go over uh, two topics uh, today, Uh, two very important topics, Uh, one being uh, the rapture. Uh, The rapture is probably one of the most uh, discussed uh, topics when it comes to the Word of God, yeah. but it is also uh, one of those topics that everybody just doesn't really see eye to eye on. Yeah. And yeah. so we, what we want to do is we want to dig into God's Word today uh, with you in reference to um, the rapture and what God's Word says about um, what many call uh, the rapture. Amen. And our other topic, uh, brother? Yeah, the other topic, you know, since we are in this time of year, there's a lot of tension been given to the upcoming eclipse on April the 8th. I mean, it's intriguing, you know, every time we have an eclipse show up, and it is very compelling. Even, you know, us coming through our lives, we've seen them here and there, but it seems like they're coming more frequently. They are. Have y'all noticed that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this one is even more prophetic because it's, Pretty much seven years to the day. Amen. That's the not number of completion. Yeah. Yep. Amen. And where they cross, where the where the the eclipses cross across the United States is very important too. Um, Amen. God, look, brother Phil and I were talking about this on the phone the other day, and it about got both of us fired up on the phone about mm-hmm. not what's coming after this. Yes. The locust plague. Yes. Mm. Yes. First time in two hundred and fourteen years, and I did that research by the yes. way. Yes. Yes. There was something that happened two hundred and fourteen years ago in the church. Amen. 
We'll talk, wish, we'll, we'll, okay. we'll talk about that. All right. um, it's very interesting. I'm sitting here going, what? what? Yeah. What? Ronnie, Ronnie's like, I don't know, y'all. What? Give it to me. Give it to me. We're but, not going to tell you. I mean, this eclipse, uh, we know Jesus said there'd be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. Amen. Um, the prophets of the Old Testament talked about it over and over again, how there would be signs, you know, the, the moon turning to blood, the sun being darkened. Um, I can say for me, in 2017 when the last one happened mm-hmm. i wasn't working that day i was at home and i had a little ford ranger pickup casey was asleep she just didn't feel good that day and was laying in the bed i walked outside right when it started and sat on my tailgate and i'm looking at the sky and as it started i can't describe to you the feeling i had it was different because i i remember going through an eclipse when i was a kid at uh coach elementary mm-hmm. you know we went, we all went outside with the glasses and all friends of ours oh yeah sorry for, <laughs> Well, they don't exist anymore. <laughs> Actually, it does. Well, it does in a different way. It was yeah. a very good different friend location. of mine. Yeah, different location. Um, actually, one of our one of my former teachers watches this podcast. Thank you very much, friend of ours. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I remember sitting there on the tailgate watching this happen, and it was about a sixty-five or seventy percent coverage at that time. But it stayed half light like that for about two hours. Mm-hmm. I just remember the feeling. And I hate to use this as a as a comparison, but it's the only thing I could think of. Like an apocalypse, like Walking Dead type apocalypse type thing. That kind of overwhelming feeling started coming over me, and I started thinking about, like, man, this is what the Lord was talking about, I think, because something feels really unnatural about what's happening right now. Amen. It didn't feel normal. And I got a feeling come April 8th, this one's not going to feel normal either to those that are spiritually awake. Or you You're going to feel something and go, hmm. What's that? Yeah. Because the reason that we're doing these subjects together with the rapture and this is because they tie in, honestly. Like, we are, we are on a prophetic clock right now that's ticking towards midnight, and it's ticking faster and faster. Amen. Amen. So. And it's amazing also, just last year, if you will, um, where they ruled against Roe versus Wade, the abortion. Yep. I mean, it seems like everything's sort of tying in. It is. You know, and God, he knows exactly what's going on. Yeah. And all that, and and I did a little research also as far as abortions, um, not getting graphical or anything mm-hmm. like that. Uh, I know there's over 63 million abortions that have actually been performed here in the United States. Yeah. And, you know, that goes without saying. I mean, how could that ever be permitted? You know, it's not in the news each and every day, and we don't, you know, think too much about it. we get tied up with life, our own lives, yeah, and we focus on other things. And I said, man, that is so terrible. I mean, even the numbers, if you even think back, the Holocaust, mm-hmm. you know, how the Nazis exterminated the Jewish people. Yeah. That was over, what, six million people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that was bad, but you're talking about over ten times yep. that... And that within itself was terrible. But whenever I, I dug further, and I got this from a reputable source, maybe, CDC, Center for D- Disease Control. And I looked it up, and they're saying that even more so, birth control pills. Mm-hmm. You say, okay, birth control. I heard the expression before I was a Christian as a teenage, young teenager. You know, you're out there living that unusual life, and people yeah. were doing birth control in whatever form or fashion. But they said from that birth control pill alone that people had access to, that the numbers are just not talking about the abortions themselves, but from that alone over, now get this number, 610 million Mm. fetuses, if you will, were were actually exterminated, if you will. I'm sure that the Plan B pill, is, yeah, is and weird. now they're yeah. doing it again. Yeah, they are. Okay, well, okay, you do away with Roe versus Wade. Okay, we've got a way to sidestep what's been happening. Yeah. And here's what we'll do. And they're capitalizing on it. In me at Not, work. Yeah. In me at work. Yeah. Well, like we were just discussing earlier before we started filming, the closer it gets to the return of Christ, yes, there's going to be spiritual activity ramp up on both sides. Amen. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah. See, there, there, there's a dark side to this, but yeah. there's also a very light side to this, too. Um, those that are seeking the Lord and living for the Lord and can hear his voice spiritually, so to speak, Amen. 
we are going look he said greater things than these mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, here here's my quote no offense <laughs> sorry <laughs> no offense but he didn't mean just being able to pray in tongues and look i love praying in tongues because i agree it make it gives me strength amen mm -hmm. but it doesn't stop there no i agree what about all the other signs i agree mm -hmm. yeah we don't mm -hmm. see those operating anymore yep yep yeah, what about healings? I got healed. I've been healed several times in my life. Yes, amen. I was healed at the altar at church with yep. my knee, oh, you amen. know, last summer. Amen. A, a walking proof. Amen. But what about the rest? Oh, yeah. We don't talk about those subjects. Yeah, yeah. they're coming. Yeah. Are we going? But the thing is, man, something you said really stirred me a couple of weeks ago. Um, we pray and we pray. And look, when something happens, he should be the first source we go to. Pray. Amen. Absolutely. Because he's the one who can handle it, not us. Amen. But when he responds with an answer to that prayer and tells you what to do, mm -hmm. what do you do? Yeah, that's true. We don't. That's the point. Well, oh, we'll, yeah. we'll pray about it. Yeah. Okay. But what about when he answers? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's true. It's, it's, a, it's a give and take. Yeah. I mean, he always does that in his word. Jesus, well, he was talking about being able to move a mountain. And, and, and cast out demons. He said mm -hmm. some of these things only come by prayer and fasting. Yeah. We leave that little part of the scripture out, though. That's true. Why? Yep. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, personally, I mean, you want to respond? No, right, yeah, personally. Um, I'm just making noises. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, personally, I believe it's because it takes a spiritual effort on your part. For one, it takes you away from that that's got you so preoccupied now. Yeah. And that that has become occupying in our life that maybe I, I've allowed in there mm -hmm. is soothing to the flesh, if you will. Yep. And why do I want to separate myself from a comfortable, what seems to be a comfortable setting to delve over into to something else that takes faith? Yep. And if you will, a spiritual effort and endeavor to get closer to God. See, it's that battle, if you will, mm -hmm. the flesh and the spirit. Yeah. I mean, God spoke it. You know, there is a battle going on. What are we giving ourselves over to? Yep. I mean, if you want comfortability in the flesh, oh, yeah. You can walk in the direction of the devil. Ultimately, it's going to lead to destruction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or either we can go in the direction God would have us to, according to his word, and be delivered. And the signs and wonders will follow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. His words never change. Just because we don't see it doesn't mean it's not existing. That's right. It's always been there. Absolutely. The devil's come in for some reason or another, somehow or another. He sort of numbed it, numbed us, if you will, and dumbed it down. Yeah. Yeah, he well, didn't he's want that. Us comfortable. That's it. He's put us in, he's put us in comfortable go. situations. Amen. It Amen. feels good. Oh, he's it made, is. He's made it church is. comfortable. Yes, yeah. so much so, brother. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, our buildings are beautiful and extravagant, and we oh, have yeah. nice, comfy chairs, and we got coffee yeah. and donuts. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, but. No budget? Oh, no, sorry. I didn't see. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> um, but seriously, like, I mean, I know of churches, and, and look, look, no knock if you go to this yeah. type of church, but yeah. I know of churches where people are getting up in the middle of service and going and getting coffee and coming yeah. and sitting back down, and mm. I'm going, what? Yeah. Mm. Like, what about listening? To the Lord. What about exactly. listening for the Lord? Because mm -hmm. He uses men and women to accomplish what He needs to accomplish on this planet, people. Okay. And Amen. number one, we need to be willing to be those men and women. And number two, we need to be willing to listen to those men and women. And sometimes we don't do either. That's true. It's a little bit of, well, let me get comfortable before I. Oh, yeah. Here it is. Listen oh, yeah. to this. Like this, you know, like I like oh, to yeah. do on the podcast. Kind of oh, yeah. Back. And bottom line is. We should not, we should be so uncomfortable yeah. because of who we are. Yeah. Amen, brother. And Built more important right. because of who he is. Yeah. We Amen. should be very uncomfortable to know that we're, we we should never become uh, uh, content into as to where we are. Amen. Uh, even I mean, uh, even in our walk, I don't I don't really I don't really give two cents over the fact of anyone who's been in church for a very long time doesn't mean nothing to me. No. Guess what? Don't mean nothing to him either. Amen. As long as we're not, uh, unless we're living it. And if we're living it out, then praise God. He he, he acknowledges that. He sees that. Amen. He wants that. But we should get to a point to where we we take that comfortability and we, we 
we get rid of the lazy boy. Oh, yes. Yeah. We get rid of the lazy boy. Mm-hmm. We get off of our hands, and we get out here, and we, we try to win the lost. We reach mm. the lost. Mm-hmm. And, 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 <clears throat> and, and show, and you and I were talking about this earlier, in the, in the sense that, you know, um, you know, people, they have to see that, that Christ is real in your life in order for Christ to look and, and to them to want Christ to be real in their life. Mm-hmm. You know, I can't go out here and, and tell my daughters that um, I can go all the live long day, tell them I love them, mm-hmm. but they want to see it in action. Yes. Oh, and yes. I can sit here all the live long day and tell you I'm a child of God, but mm-hmm. you you need to see that in action. Mm-hmm. I, and and yeah. I've heard people say, well, I don't have to, I don't, you don't, I don't have to show you anything. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know who you're trying to win. Yeah, mm-hmm. good point, brother. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how you're trying to win to the Lord, but trust me, people, yeah. people want to see things. They yeah. want something that's real. Yeah, authentic, raw. Yeah, real because there's plenty of not, especially in this day of technology. Oh yeah. I mean, you can simulate any circumstance. Ooh. You can build any environment. Go ahead and spit it out, brother. <laughs> I'll go ahead and finish what you're saying, uh, brother. And <laughs> even from that standpoint, a lot of people do want to see a sign, mm. and just to the subject we're talking about you know the eclipse the rapture Mm -hmm. these are things that are going to be so evident that you cannot deny it no and i've heard someone express i don't know if if it's with you guys or some post i may have seen you know the eclipse is one aspect that man cannot fake if you will yeah Mm -hmm. it's beyond their reach yep it's not on display that that you can i'm not going to say photoshop or anything i'm just kidding <laughs> but you can't make it up you Mother can't add to it. a takeaway from <laughs> disclaimer yeah <laughs> but but it is true though yeah and god says in the last days there will be signs and wonders mm-hmm. in the heavens mm-hmm. for a child of god that's exciting yeah you you're looking we, at? we know where we are yeah see that's mm-hmm. it and we're in a miraculous time god is is giving us this opportunity to serve him yep. with all that's within us. Yes. And that that's within us, when it comes out and blossoms, turns into something glorious and beautiful yep. that brings glory to God only. Amen. And that's the only. point. Amen. Only. See, I've Amen. said this for five years straight because I felt this deep in my spirit. God is raising a generation, and I don't mean by an age. I mean all ages, but a generation of men and women who do not care whose name is on the marquee. Amen. Right. They don't care about anything about being no. on a pulpit, a platform behind, no. on a stage with Amen. lights. Amen. No, they care about Jesus and Jesus only. That's Praise it. The Lord. Amen. Now, Praise we're, uh, transparency, we're filming this the day before Easter, mm-hmm. and you just said something a minute ago that mm-hmm. stirred something in me I saw last night. Uh, you know that post I made the other day about Elevation Worship and about what they mm-hmm. said they would not put on their Easter programs? Mm-hmm. Yes. I saw we the podcast. About, we talked about that this yeah. morning. I yeah. saw the podcast this morning. Oh, really? From the lady who, okay. Yeah, I saw that. That's what I was telling you about. Oh, man. Yeah. Boy, I got fired up. I was <laughs> like, hold up, lady. Well, since we're talking about that, you go ahead. I, yeah. I've got some things to say, too. Yeah. Here we go. No. Deep dive. Ronnie woke up. <laughs> no. Deep dive. Seriously, I'm, I'm watching this, and, and I'm hearing this lady. Okay, first of all, no offense, but if a church is big enough that they have a director of language, there's a problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's a minister, by the way. Mm-hmm. She's credentialed. That mm-hmm. means nothing to me. No offense, but yeah. that means nothing to me. This yeah. does. Amen. Mm-hmm. And she said, "We are not going to say blood of Jesus or resurrection. Oh no, or or the cross, or the cross. Now they'll hear. The, here's her words. They'll hear that when they get into the service. What? Mm. Yeah. The the word the wording too from her was um, she doesn't want to offend right anyone who is an unbeliever. <laughs> um, let's just and, and here's the thing." Let's just get people in. Yeah. At, at, at any cost, let's get because her what her words were actually this. She said the most important thing about Easter mm-hmm. is inviting people to church. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can I tell you how much junk that is? Yes. Yeah, it is. It if is. Jesus is not the focus of Easter, mm-hmm. that's not a church. No. No. Call no. it what you want. You can put it on the sign outside. Yeah. I don't care. It, it, it is not. A church. Look, if God ain't good enough <laughs> to get people to come to Preach. church, yeah. if God ain't good enough to make people come back, because if you're going to have, we've said it before, if you're going to have all this entertainment, if you're going to do yeah. all these 
these these tricks mm -hmm. or, or whatever you want to call it to get people to come in mm -hmm. and look, let me just say this the word of god says if you are ashamed of me mm -hmm. i will be Preach ashamed that. of you amen bro. i i i mean and, and here's the thing i it it it, it irks me clearly mm -hmm. but <laughs> it, it irks me because we we have lost people mm -hmm. yes you're going to get them in here but if but if but if the cross mm -hmm. wasn't good enough to get them to come to church if the blood of Jesus wasn't good mm -hmm. enough to get them to church That's if the right. resurrection mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ isn't good enough to get them get them to come to church what are you going to feed them what yeah. are you feeding them inside those four walls yeah something that's going to send them to hell yeah, yeah. unfortunately high and dry one day brother there's no doubt about it and that's true it says in the last days well it's just like you were saying marketing it's a good marketing approach yeah and the other churches the other businesses have done it and based on their criteria we already know how many people are going to come how many people are going to get saved god knows that no man yeah. knows that the holy spirit knows which ones are going to be drawn to him yep but yet we make it a statistical thing something that we can actually measure based on man's standards mm -hmm. not the spirit of god yep now you've taken it out if you will out of the hands of god mm -hmm. and you're manipulating right the outcome it says in the last days that we will be treated as merchandise mm -hmm. they will use us in such a way to serve their own purpose and mm -hmm. i'm talking about the devil i'm not talking about man mm -hmm. specifically even though that is the avenue of how it comes about yeah and we can either stand for it or stand against mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. amen mm -hmm. brother that's right you know I, that that was a rabbit trail but ties right in because mm -hmm. um i'm gonna read something right quick mm. Where we can <laughs> You want red or black? They don't wrote so much, it ran out of ink. I know. <laughs> uh, I was praying and studying a while back, and the Lord dropped something on me out of Malachi. And it, it's odd how this ties in with what we're talking about today. Because you, you when I start, you may not think it does, but l let me explain. Um, in chapter 1 of Malachi, I love the way the CSB breaks things down, but it, it, it's got a subheading here under verse six, or above verse 6 that says, Disobedience of the Priests. Okay, Malachi chapter 1 starts off about the Lord's love for Israel mm -hmm. and how he loves his people. Listen to this. A son honors his father and a servant his master, but I am a father. Where's my honor? This is God talking to his people. Mm -hmm. This still talks to us today as the church, by mm -hmm. the way. Listen clearly. But if I am a father, where is my honor? And if I am a master, where is your fear of me? says the Lord of armies to you priests who despise my name. Let's stop right there. He's talking mm -hmm. to pastors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's talking to leadership. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I ain't calling nobody out in particular. I'm calling everybody out, including me, Amen. including you, Myself. including you. Amen. We're all ministers of the gospel. Listen to this. Those that have a call, now we're all called to witness, but those that are called mm -hmm. to be a minister of the gospel, you listen clearly. This goes mm -hmm. to you, too, if you ever see this from the lady who put that language out there. Listen mm -hmm. clearly. Amen. Yet you ask, how have we despised your name? Mm -hmm. By presenting defiled food on my altar. Mm -hmm. How have we defiled you, you ask? When you say the Lord's table is contemptible, mm -hmm. when you present a blind animal for sacrifice, is it not wrong? Mm -hmm. And when you present a lame or sick animal, is it not wrong? Bring it to your governor. Would he be pleased with you or show you favor? Saying, hey, if you're serving me as your king, and I'm going to go there. If you're serving me as your king and you're getting your word recycled from somebody else with the same fluffy message that somebody else preached somewhere else mm -hmm. from this, mm -hmm. and G the G word, as Phil likes to say, yeah. <laughs> You're bringing a lame sacrifice to God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're yeah. bringing something that you didn't labor over, spending time mm -hmm. with our Father for Him mm -hmm. to give you a message. And people will say, God's Word will set out to, it will accomplish what it sets out to. Yes, it will, but so will Satan's. Remember that. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's Amen. not over. <laughs> Amen. Would He be pleased with you or show you favor? Ask the Lord of armies. And now plead for God's favor. Will He be gracious to us? Since this has come from your hands, Will he show any favor, any of you favor? 
Ask the Lord of armies, I wish one of you would shut the temple doors so that you would no longer kindle a useless fire on my altar. Ooh, wee. Amen. Amen. Man, this hit me hard when I was reading it. Oh, amen, brother. And it gets worse. (laughs) (laughs) I am not pleased with you, says the Lord of armies, and I will accept no offering from your hands. My name will be great among the nations from the rising of the sun to its setting. Incense and pure offerings will be presented in my name in every place because my name will be great among the nations, says the Lord of armies. But you are profaning it when you say, the Lord's table is defiled and its product, its food is contemptible. Mm -hmm. That is what you're doing using that kind of language. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 100%, brother. You're saying this is not good enough. The cross is supposed to offend you. Oh, yes. Yes. Yes, 100%. It's the most brutal, offensive, look, it it is shameful. Mm -hmm. He lived a life that we should have lived and died a death that we should have died. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. 100%. 100%. It is shameful for anybody to say that that is not, we don't want to offend anybody. You should be offended. Yep. And it's not our job to offend people. This offends on its own because he said, my word will judge. Amen. It does. Amen. But we don't have enough of it anymore in churches. Oh, amen. No, no. We well, it's just like the mega churches you're talking about. You, they don't want to offend people. Okay, let's say if they have 3,000 in attendance. They present the truth of God's word. Now, all of a sudden, they have 2,000. Is God's word not effective? Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. 100%. Absolutely. You don't base it upon man's way of governing things because God knows when his word takes effect and it matures that's been presented there, lives are going to be changed. You might not see it in your yeah. plus column on your roster, if you will, mm. but God is working, mm-hmm. and it's being registered in his book that he uses at the end of the road to determine this is what was accomplished. These are the souls that were saved, yep. not based upon your numbers. We're not going by your book. He's not holding up your book at the end of the road and say, okay, based upon your book, these people should be in heaven. Mm-hmm. Guess what? None of them are there. Right. 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 None of them are there. Right. That's good. This is good. Yeah. We're, we're, I didn't know we were going to end up here, but okay. Amen. But here we are. <laughs> yeah. I want to finish that chapter because I want I want you to hear what the Lord says about these people. <clears throat> and to be frank and transparent, I have been one of these people in the past. Amen, brother. Well, I hate to even why admit don't you that. Be Brandon and be transparent. Amen, brother. Yes. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> have we got sound effects? You got the transparent. <laughs> there you go. Bro. There you You're go. transparent. There, there you, you go. go. You can't even <laughs> see it. No. I just didn't know who Frank was. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I used to go to church with Frank, and no, I'm joking. <laughs> Actually, did. Um, <laughs> the deceiver is cursed who has an acceptable male in his flock and makes a vow, but sacrifices mm-hmm. a defective animal to the Lord. Amen, brother. If you don't bring your best as a minister and you're not bringing your best to the Lord and yeah. laboring over what he's giving you to give to people, mm-hmm. you're cursed. Amen. He says, for I am a great king, says the Lord of armies, and my name will be feared among the nations. Praise the Lord. Therefore, this decree is for you priests. Mm-hmm. If you don't listen and if you don't take it to heart to honor my name, says the Lord of armies, I will send a curse among you and I will mm-hmm. curse your blessings. Mm-hmm. In fact, I have already begun to curse them because you are not taking it to heart. Mm-hmm. I'm going to rebuke your descendants. He's telling mm-hmm. them right mm-hmm. now that he's going to rebuke those who curse, those who persecute Jesus is Amen. what he's saying. Mm-hmm. Guess what? When you stand in a church or anywhere and say you represent God and you do not honor what he did on that cross, you are cursing his name. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. That's true. Yep. And I'm sick and tired of it. So Absolutely. is he. Oh, Absolutely. Amen. You know, amen. I can amen. feel it when I start. Like I told both of these brothers earlier, when I woke up today. This is the day that 2,000 years ago the, the disciples were just in chaos because they thought it was over. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. The darkness had surrounded yeah. them, and they're thinking this is over. Right. Amen. I felt that when I started thinking and praying about mm-hmm. that this morning. I was like, man, how, how must Peter have felt? How much John have felt? John's mm-hmm. the only one who stuck by his side. Mm-hmm. Amen. He stood Amen. there the whole time while he was yeah. on the cross. Yep. You know? Amen. Amen. How must he have felt? True. We don't think that these are real people sometimes. Mm-hmm. They are. I know. We read this, and oh, we go, yeah. well, this is... We're so disconnected from it. No, these yeah. were real people just like oh, us. Amen, brother. Amen. Well, how must they have felt? Amen. But guess what? 
they long to see the days that we live in. Amen. That's right. <laughs> they were prophesied knowing that they'd probably never see it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah. they said, wow, greater things than these, the latter mm -hmm. rain, all these things are coming. And now we're starting to see them come to pass, tying this right back into the Amen. eclipse and the rapture. Yeah. This eclipse is prophetic. Look, the blood moon cycle that happened in 2014, 2015, mm -hmm. 2016 mm -hmm. led right into an eclipse in 2017. Yeah. Yep. Here we are seven Amen. years later with another eclipse, Amen. the number of completion. Amen. Then the 214-year swarm comes out of the ground not yeah. long after the eclipse. Yeah. Yep. They're going to consume crops across the entire southeast. And, and just if you know like the Katie dids. Yep. I mean, the and I'm not trying to get off on a tangent, but just the sound of that many millions and millions making a sound. Mm -hmm. Any wall, just like Jericho, at a certain point in time, yep. stuff's going to be broken down. In your right. lives, you think that it cannot be penetrated. God is going to get your attention, yes. getting our yeah. attention. Yeah. His creation is honoring him. Oh boy. They were asleep. They were, if you will, dead and dormant. Now at the prescribed time, yes. they're coming forth. Thank you for joining us for Breaking News. We love you. If you do not know the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior, seek Him today. Romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 10 state if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. One believes with the heart, resulting in righteousness, and one confesses with the mouth, resulting in salvation. If you do not understand what that means or need prayer or help of any kind, reach out to us on social media or through email at bearingwitnessbot at gmail.com. Thank you and have a blessed week.